Day eight of the 2024 US Championships saw I am Carissa Yip continue her perfect start with her eighth straight win as she fights for not just her second straight title, but also the $11,064,000 Bobby Fischer prize. Jumping into the open results, tournament leader Fabiano Caruana drew with Wesley So after a long struggle, as all other games were also drawn, with the exception of Hans Niemann defeating Abimano Mishra the last moment in an endgame. Caruana remains in the lead with Niemann and a Wonder Liang a half point behind. In the US Women's Championship, Carissa Yip won yet again, this time over Atusa Porkashian, who Yip defeated with black. Other results saw Begum Tokerjonova draw with Jennifer Yu, while Alice Lee defeated Irina Crush to jump into third place with 5 out of 8. Begum is in second with 5.5 and Krissa of course is leading. Going into the games, we'll start with the key game in the open section between Wesley So and the leader Karawana. And this one started off as a Rogozin defense with So playing queen to b3, definitely not the most common move in the position c5 and this one's pretty interesting out of the opening knight c6 bishop to g5 both players playing pretty quick but here Carwana spent some time on this move queen to a5 now bishop f6 d takes c4 is thrown in queen c4 gf6 rook to c1 queen c5 queen h4 and here's something quite interesting happened the engines give king to e7 uh, as being the main move for black wesley at this point all playing all of his moves uh, basically very very quickly after king e7 apparently it's about equal but of course uh, very complicated position with the king in the center instead Caruana takes on c3 rook takes c3 and now plays the move queen to b4 and at this point white had the chance to take on f6 uh, which looks very very promising at first glance after queen takes f6 the rook is hit black would probably have to play rook to f8 and then the engines give knight to g5 uh, as being advantageous for white though this of course looks very very uh, messy uh, at the start black could play queen takes b2 then f3 is suggested the king gets a square on f2 and it seems like white is doing well with threats of knight takes h7 for example um, but yeah obviously a very complicated situation on the board instead so when for the end game with queen takes b4 knight takes b4 now a3 but it seemed like black didn't really have any huge uh, problems in this one. Although they did play for some time, and I'll quickly go through the moves here, but actually this was a uh, very, very long grind. Wesley was pushing this one and trying to win. Because white does have a small advantage here as black has weakened their structure on uh, the king side. Perhaps knight f1 and uh, knight e3 or knight g3 here was uh, a better try, but anyway, we get king e3 and f4. And yeah, Wesley was pushing this one for some time, though for the most part, it didn't seem like Caruana had huge issues defending this position as he puts all of his pieces uh, in the center and uh, keeps his king in the center as well. White is kind of advancing. Uh, the players maneuver around a bit, but no repetition, you know, was, was agreed. Wesley keeps pushing a4, h4, b5, knight e5. And I do want to show you folks uh, the full game just because it was... Quite an interesting uh, struggle until the very end. Here b5 is played. If black takes on b5 with the bishop, there's knight c7 check winning that back. So king to d6. Now knight to e3 hitting the f5 pawn as well as h6 pawn after that. So Fabi defends with bishop to d3. And still, yeah, Wesley wasn't able to do anything here. Um, though he keeps the game going. And this one actually did go on for quite some time. Uh, as white tried to maximize his chances. Now bishop d5, knight to c4, knight e5. We do get the trade of knights, king takes e5. Now if black were to trade bishops, this would actually be a losing king and pawn endgame. As white takes with the king, if king to d7, then white comes back, king e5, and wins a pawn. And if black were to go this way, then king to c6, and white would be faster here. So definitely wasn't too late to uh, mess this up, but Caruana continues to defend very, very accurately here. Uh, again, offering the trade, black declines correctly. And yeah, uh, white wasn't able to make any progress. Now bishop b8 hit, hitting the h-pawn, bishop e2, bishop back to d7, and Caruana was able to defend this bishop endgame. And yeah, at this point, the players finally uh, agreed to a repetition uh, on move 74. So uh, important draw for the tournament as Caruana remains in the lead. Um, all the other games were drawn as well, except for one, uh, this one between Hans Niemann and Abimanu Mishra. 
Uh, very, very interesting game as well. This came out of the Italian game. Earlier, Han sacrificed the pawn to get to this point, but of course, Black's pawns on the queen side here were quite weak. And at this point, engines are saying bishop to c7, and it, it's about equal. Black is doing fine here. Mishra decides to go for knight d3, forcing white to give back the bishop here. But this position turns out to be quite nice for white, as Hans is able to win back the pawn on a4. And in the resulting structure, black has this isolated a pawn, isolated c pawn, and more weaknesses than white does. Um, so white does a nice job here of piling up on this a pawn, bringing the king over to the queen side. Black does go king f6, king g5, but now white grabs a pawn and gets an extra pawn in this rook and pawn endgame. So king g6, rook f5, f6. Still, the engines only give white about a plus one advantage, so it's not clear if this is winning for white or if black is holding, but definitely very, very close to a win. And Han starts pushing here, h5, rook to d6. Black, uh, playing, defending extremely well was Mishra, looking for his last kind of chance to counterplay with g5 and h4. And this does pose problems for white, but Hans manages to figure it out. He goes king to d4, king to e3, h4, takes, takes. And now white needed to play f3 check in order to keep a winning advantage here. But this was kind of tough. The idea after king to g3 is now to play rook f4. Hard move to see in my opinion. After h3, white is going rook to g4 check, king h2, and now rook to g6. And the idea is that black's king is very much cut off on the g-file and can't really do anything with this h-pawn. In the meantime, white is pushing e5, white can bring the king in, uh, and then get counterplay uh, with uh, all of the uh, extra pawns white has in the position. So this one would have been winning for white, although still some precision uh, is needed from here. Instead, Hans went rook f4 check, king g5, now king to f3. And here black actually escapes a bit after king h5, rook g7, h3. White manages to pick up this h-pawn and gets two extra pawns in the position. The problem is all this ends with rook to b8, where Mishra is able to pick up one of white's extra pawns and then has a very active rook after that. So here black actually escapes into a drawn rook endgame. Rook c4, king e5, takes, takes, uh, wins back the second uh, extra pawn, so now things are equal. But okay, the game continues, e5, c5, e6, and Mishra once again, heavy time trouble here. And this one's still not super uh, easy to defend. He finds the only move though, c4, and his rook is in good position to give checks from the side. But now check, and inexplicably, Mishra plays king to f5 here instead of the correct move king to f6. So this one would have actually held the draw for black. White cannot push e7 because of rook a6 check, and sooner or later black is going to be able to win the e-pawn if the king advances. Black just keeps giving checks, King to d8 here, nice idea, um, is generally, here actually I think you can take, but generally you wouldn't want to because of rook f2, but the point is you can just keep giving checks, and white's king can't really stay in contact with the pawn. So after king f6, it would have been a draw, but Mishra goes king f5, and now this one is actually losing because white pushes e7, black gives rook a6 check, and maybe what black was counting on was that after king to d7, he can actually give check king d6, and take this one, giving up the rook and go king to e5. This position actually would be a draw with best play, so perhaps this is what Mishra had in mind. But unfortunately for him, white finds king to d5 here, and now the problem is that his king is not on f6, where he could take the pawn. The pawn is starting to promote, and white uh, black doesn't have a defense here. So he gives check, king d4, he takes this one, but now rook f2 check. Sorry, he goes back to a8, but now rook f2 check, and the rook is coming to f8, and that's it. King e6, rook f8, and black can't stop the pawn from promoting. Uh, so very, very nice technique by Neiman at the end here to convert this one. Uh, unfortunately, blunder for Mishra, but yeah, basically uh, he ends up losing the game at the very last moment. Jumping to the Women's Championship here, we have Carissa's game against Atusa Porkashian. Uh, Carissa playing black, and she goes for uh, one of her pet lines, the modern system with a6. Uh, essentially resembling uh, more of a, a Pierce defense at some point as well here with d6. And yeah, this game got very, very complicated very quickly. Here white goes bishop to d3, c5, bishop e3. But it seems like Krista was well prepared here. She goes knight f6, dc5, and now knight to g4 uh, played pretty quickly and getting a lot of uh, counterplay immediately in the position. 
Bishop d4 was played, and now e5 might have been very, very interesting, uh, hitting the bishop and then looking to take on f4 next move with, yeah, huge complications, but instead we saw bishop takes d4, knight, uh, knight d4, knight takes c5. This is pretty reasonable for black as well. Queen to e2, castles, h3, knight of 6 and the players reach this kind of middle game with opposite sides castling. Um, it's very, very sharp. The dark third bishop's already being traded off which generally would favor white in this case as black's king is a little bit loose, but it seems like objectively black is totally fine and getting enough counterplaying time with b5, b4. So b5, knight b3, b4 apparently was possible here, but knight a4. And now white goes knight to b1. This move seems like a mistake. I think the engine was giving e5 uh, as being uh, a better uh, try, um, where white, yeah, strikes in the center. Black can take on c3, but then bc3, and it's hard for black because you don't want to uh, take de5 because of opening up the d-file, and there'll be all kinds of discovered attacks against the queen. Um, so here, apparently, maybe white would be slightly better, but of course, very, very complicated after either knight d5 or knight h5 here. Uh, instead, we saw knight to b1, but now black definitely gets the initiative, so queen b6, g4, bishop to b7, and uh, white goes h4, knight c5, takes, takes, and now a huge mistake here from white e5, hitting the knight, but opening up the diagonal to the rook on h1, it ends up that black can just kind of take this material and survive. Instead, at this point, white needed to play c3, and then the position would have still been uh, within reason. I think black is a little bit better, but it's not much. The bishop can drop back to c2, the knight will get back into the game, and the e-pawn is well protected. After e5, however, Carissa uh, pounces on her opportunity. She doesn't take the rook right away, which is actually totally playable, but she goes c4 first which is even stronger, just introducing an attack to the bishop on d3, trying to get rid of one of white's main attacking pieces. White takes on f6, but now c takes d3, queen takes d3, and bishop takes h1, and black picks up the extra exchange. f e7, rook e8, rook takes, rook takes e7, black gets rid of this pawn, and white has one pawn for the exchange, but it's really just not enough as uh, black's extra rook is too strong here. Um, that said, uh, definitely some good technique was needed here, as white is looking for knight of 6 check, winning back the exchange, so king f8, c4, black takes, knight of 6, but now black's pieces come in, and at this point it's just completely winning for black, and yeah, Chris had no issues uh, converting from here, as she goes for the end game and then just uses the rook uh, to clean up most of white's pawns. It did get a little bit tricky here as we get into a pawn race, but black's rook definitely the better piece in this scenario and black ends up winning the race with the h pawn here after b6 h2 b7 important uh, nice little finesse here rook d4 check and rook d8 just bringing the rook back to stop the pawn and of course white's knight is way too far to stop the h pawn so knight c5 and the game soon ended here after queen c6 queen to b6 and with that carissa won her eighth straight game uh, in this year's U.S. Women's Championships, as she seems like a lock, of course, for the title, but is also going for the perfect 11 out of 11 Bobby Fischer prize, which would net her a bonus uh, prize of $64,000. So everything left to play for Carissa uh, in these final three rounds. So that takes us into tomorrow's rest day. Round nine will take place on Monday at the usual time. And we've got Caruana against a Wonder Li Yang in the open section. So huge matchup there as a Wonder is just a half point behind Caruana. And Carissa will be white against Megan Lee uh, as she continues her run for that perfect 11 out of 11. Uh, should be a very, very interesting finish to the US Chess Championship. So hopefully you'll be tuning in and I'll see you in these recaps afterwards. Till then, take care.